Hello guys, my name is Desmond and I welcome you to my lesson for today. Ladies and gentlemen, as I've indicated in the group, in today's lesson we'll be looking at one of past exam papers where we will try to solve as many questions as we can. But one thing for sure, it seems like in today's lesson we might be looking at these type of functions. So just make sure that for you to be able to enjoy today's lesson, you must have catched up uh, from the previous two lessons that I've done. Um, first one I did on Monday, where we focused on two functions. And then the last one that I did yesterday, where we focused on uh, two functions. So in today's lesson, I want us to have a look at this question five. So I suppose everything is clear um, from your side. And most importantly, guys, in case if there's someone who's watching this lesson and you're catching up, just make sure to subscribe if you haven't. And again, hit that bell notification to be notified of my future uploads. So guys, we are given two functions namely f of x and g of x so the moment you are given functions it is very very much important ladies and gentlemen that you are able to notice the type of a function that you are given and most importantly remember guys uh, i was watching one of my previous lessons just to check in terms of how it looks like from someone who has attended the lesson or from someone who's actually catching up. So just in case if I mention something uh, incorrectly, otherwise, let's say, for example, I say this is H of X. The moment you realize that, just make sure to unmute your mic and correct me there. Because sometimes it happens that in my mind, I'm seeing F of X or G of X. But when I say it, I say something incorrectly but one thing for sure what i like is that in terms of the calculations we get everything correctly so um ladies and gentlemen in the statement that is given obviously what i'll be reading is posted in the group so quickly 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 let me just go back to that uh, question paper so it's question number five where the statement says given f of x equals to negative 3 over x plus 2 plus 1. So the other equation is g of x, which is equals to 2 to the exponent negative um, x, then minus 4. So let's now have a look at the first question. So there's no any other additional information we are just given that f of x is equals to this and g of x is equals to that. So based on our lessons that we had previously, I'm going to be giving you guys some questions just to refresh our mind and just to make sure that we are all on the same page. So guys, um, the first question says determine f of negative that. So the question says determine f of negative three and this question is allocated one mark before we even answer that question guys um are you guys able to see the type of functions we are given and again if you want to comment and respond to my question just unmute your mic mention your name i'm going to recognize you then you'll just mention your name um the province in which you are then from there you go for it so when I ask a question, don't answer the question, but mention your name and your province. Uh, but before you even do that, just mention your name so that I can choose who can answer my question. So guys, here comes the question. Um, we are given two functions. Which one is which uh, between the graph of f of x and g of x? If you are that confident enough, you can even go on to explain in terms of what are you seeing over there um, in terms of maybe the a value or the q or whatever just so that you take us through um, what you understood from our previous lesson guys that was my question anyone 
to say something with regards to these two functions. <clears throat> Guys, are you are you still there? Uh, Shreya, Sitle, are you guys still there? Yes, sir. Oh, so you got the question. It says that you are not able to um, respond to that question, isn't it? Guys, did you, did you all get my question? Um, I'm not really sure in terms of what's going on, but I noticed there are some of you guys who are not able to participate. So just in case if your mic... It's muted, guys. I see Lekanye uh, Guzi. It seems like she probably want to say something. Uh, just in case if you want to comment, guys, um, and you're not able to, just make sure to inbox uh, me so that I can bring it to the tutor's attention to find out what could be the issue. Uh, uh, Melo Janifa, did you want to say something? Or Lekanye Guzi, did you want to comment there? Okay. Can you please repeat the question? Um, who's speaking? Okay, Likanye, I was asking, what can you say about those two functions based on the lessons that you attended previously? Sir. Uh, go for it, um, uh, Shriyas. So, uh, f of x is uh, hyper huh? hyperbola, mm -hmm. hyperbola, which is mm -hmm. y is equal to a over x plus p plus uh, q, and uh, g of x is a parabola, which is y equals to mx plus c okay um uh, thanks for that three years anyone to add on to that sir uh, i think g of it. x is a parabola ax squared plus q Okay, uh, it's fine. Thanks very much for your comments, guys. Um, you can now have your mics muted. Okay. So remember, guys, um, based on yesterday's lesson, we said we've got stages of this function. We have it at a baby stage. Uh, then it grows to become a teenager. So we have teenager there. Then we have it at that stage of adulthood. So most importantly, guys, they, we have two types of functions. And the first one, Shriyas, you are correct, it's a hyperbola. So as a baby stage, this is where it started. It started as a, let's just use f of x since they used f of x. It started as f of x being equals to a over x. Then we say it, it grew to become a teenager. And this is how it looks like f of x as a teenager. It's x plus p. Then after that stage, it grows to become an adult. Then when it's an adult, it looks like that, which is f of x being a over x plus p, then plus q. The second one, both of you guys, 
you got it incorrectly. Um, it is an exponential. If you guys said straight line or parabola, um, it's wrong because what makes you to notice the type of a function is the position of that x. When it's a parabola, that's when you've got, let's say, for example, g of x, which is equals to, um, it could be maybe 2x. Then you have a squared over there. A, as the stages continue plus b, as the stages continue, they have it as something like that. So check the position of that x. So if the x is at the bottom and not as an exponent, then it's a parabola. So a parabola, you notice it by that squared. So a whatever to, a, I mean, whatever then x to the, to the power of two, that's a parabola. So in terms of a, a straight line, we said it's y is equals to mx plus c. Can you guys see x is at the bottom and the exponent is that invisible one over there. So this is a straight line. An exponential, that's where you have, you can have two, three, whatever. So when the x is at the top, then it becomes an exponential. I hope you guys are able to notice the difference between the two. So just make sure, guys, that in case if you want to comment, don't worry about your response being wrong or correct. It really helps um, uh, because in this case, I'm able to notice that from time to time, I need to make you guys aware of which type of a function it is. And again, how do you notice? So for this one of a function, we say it, it starts as g of x, which is equals to b to the exponent x. Then it grows to become a teenager and it looks like um, g of x, they just add a there and they say b to the exponent that. Then it grows to become something which may be um, a bit longer or a bit complicated to the exponent x then plus q. So I hope you guys still remember all of this information. So when I ask a question, we can still refer to this. So let me let me not remove all of this information because I notice it might be uh, very, very much important. So let's see, guys. Um, we have these two functions, f of x being equals to negative 3 over x plus 2 plus 1. Then we also have g of x being equals to 2 to the exponent negative x minus 4. So in this case, let me just explain to you guys and not... Um, ask the question just so that we can move um, a little bit faster. So remember guys, <clears throat> we said this is a parabola. And now that we are given a parabola, you check at that, which means that is the A value uh, of this function. So the A value is positive. When the A value is positive, it means we know in which quadrants our function is, is going to be. And we know those two refers to um, the P and the Q. We can use those to determine um, the asymptotes. And again, we know this has an impact on the vertical shift. Same as this one, we know our A is that invisible one over there being multiplied by B to the exponent negative value. And most importantly, this is minus um, a minus four. We know that minus four, it, it has got an impact on the vertical shift. So something that could be confusing you guys is that part of having a negative exponent over there. But remember, we said a, this type of a function, generally it's something like a b to the exponent x minus 4. And we said b can never be equals to a 0, if I remember from yesterday's notes. And again, what did we say, guys? I think we said b can be between, um, did we say between 0 and 1? Just confirm for me if that is correct. So can you see um, the a there is actually um invisible one. So that means that function is actually g of x is equals to 
invisible one multiplying the b value b you see it as two but b is actually not um two it's actually one over two then to the exponent x so this function is actually one over two to the exponent x then minus four so that's how examiner tries to be tricky there by playing your mind with how that formula looks like so for us to take it back to that that stage remember uh, this is that invisible one multiplied by b which is two to the exponent negative one a uh, that so can you see two to the exponent negative one is a half guys if it was four there at the bottom it means it's four to the exponent negative one so when you remove the bracket you multiply the exponent by the exponent then you end up having two to the exponent negative one minus four so in other words our b value is actually between zero and one and what is the b value it's actually one over two so someone who's been writing the notes a uh, is this thing correct and is this thing also correct based on our notes that we had yesterday can someone just confirm and again a uh, is it just these two notes that i made or was there something in addition to those two I hope someone is checking um, some notes over there. So while you guys do that, let's answer the first question, which says determine f of negative three. And this question is allocated how many marks? It's just one mark. So, ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> sometimes questions are asked in a tricky way so here they are saying f of x a uh, but that x is being replaced by negative 3 which means 5.1 what the question wants you to calculate is actually f of where you see x substitute negative 3 on this same formula so that means wherever you see x you are going to substitute negative three so there you substitute negative three then what are you getting when you punch all of this whatever that you get it's an answer for f of x so every time when they say g of whatever h of whatever but in, inside the brackets they write a certain number it simply means on that equation where you see x substitute this and punch the whole of that on your calculator so what are you getting when you punch all of this on your calculator there's someone who's done that calculation already it's positive four sir someone is getting positive four are we all getting positive four yes, yes sir okay 100 percent. so guys just before i forget at what stage is that formula and again at what stage is this formula based on these stages that i that i've told you guys about at what stage are those formulas is it at, at a baby stage at a teenage stage or um, at an adult adult stage the f of x is is called is at the stage of an adult then g of x is at the stage of the um, I think it's a teenager for Okay. Thanks for that input. But now let's talk a uh, Mabu who's speaking. Uh, Madam Speaker. Oh Mabunt Mabuntle who? Mabuntle Sakina. Uh, Sakina, let's check. Um for f of x, what is the value of a? Sakina, Sakina, Sakina. It's negative three. 
do you do you know what does it mean when it's negative three mm, oh uh, i think is is when is negative three mm-hmm. is on the second and the fourth quadrant hundred percent second quadrant and that quadrant so don't don't mute your mic um today we are going to be speaking a uh, sakina so there okay so uh, is there something that you want to talk about with regards to that positive one you said positive one it is shifting one unit uh, one upward. unit to the right uh, upward and yes because because that one it is for vertical shift which could be up or down name yes and say so you wrote mm-hmm. you wrote quadrant three and quadrant eight quadrant four oh you yes tango tango so now uh what can you say sakina with regards to that denominator there x plus two is there something that you want to say with regards to that uh mm, x plus two is mm-hmm. is not where our point is turning our turning point mm-hmm. yeah okay so uh remember sakina uh this is x plus two so it 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 only tells us about um the asymptote so just remember always that this is the vertical shift and again um this is the asymptote for f of x and also this part of the equation it means the asymptote um is actually x plus 2 is equals to 0 then you transpose then x is negative 2 uh, this is the asymptote. So, uh, is that one where we say uh, it's on Dela? Was it you who said um, it's on no. Dela? It never touches. But did you attend yesterday's lesson? It sounds like you did because you've got an idea of what's yes, going I on over there. Okay, hundred percent. Thanks very much, Mabwenze. Uh, I'm just not sure if there's someone else who also wants to take us through that second one, uh, which is G of X. Uh, you can now mute your mic so that we check if there's someone who also wants to give it a try. Anyone else, guys? Okay, so I'll take you through uh, that G of X. So, uh, let me see. Sakina, no need to unmute your mic, but um, I just want to say this one uh, it's not at a teenage stage. So let's let's check the teenage stage. So teenage stage it means we have g of x. It is just a times b to the exponent x. There is no q. But can you see this one? It has a q, and um, that one also. Can you see it has a q? So a there is invisible one over there there's no need to write it if it's invisible one so don't don't you you guys don't be confused by that too and think it's um a it's not a but it's um b so a is that invisible one so this is how you possibly score yourself one mark so let's now move to the next question is there someone who can quickly uh read us the Second question there, what does it say? So it is determine x if g of x is equal to 4. Okay, so um, they are saying uh, determine x if... um, a g of x is equals to 
four. And this question is allocated to Max. So guys, never, ever, ever get confused by this type of questions. For as long as a question is allocated, one mark, two marks, or three marks, it's not that much difficult, ladies and gentlemen. You should not be confused by that. I'm not sure, guys, if there's someone who wants to interpret this question where they say, uh, find x if g of x is equals to that is there someone who wants to try um to interpret for us what that statement mean remember guys you don't have to give me the correct answer i just want to show to you guys that a uh, you might give an attempt of which you're not sure of something but in the end you will end up understanding exactly what the question wants. Whatever that you are suspecting, just share with us. It does not mean at f of x where you see x you substitute with four uh, wait, wait, wait. so you're asking if what did you say um who is it is it uh, sakina yes uh, go, ask, go for it mm -hmm. i was asking that it does not mean that where you see x you are substituting mm -hmm. with four okay Thanks very much for that, Sakina. So good people, it means questions may be asked in two different ways. You know, the reason why I like it when you participate, regardless of your response being correct or wrong, is because it helps me to explain even better. Sakina, thanks very much for that response because um, I've just noticed something of which I'm sure you will never forget for the rest of your life so sakina when they say where you see x you substitute with whatever value that's if that um value is substituted there so if they wanted you to substitute for where you see x then it means they were going to say find whatever a if g of 4 is equals to whatever the case may be. So the difference between these two types of questions, the first one and this one, is because the first question they said, f, find f of negative 3. So can you see, in this case, that's where they said, where you see x, because in place of x, they substituted negative 3. So where you see x, substitute that that's why we had to do all of that and where we see x substituted um, it there but this question is different in a sense that they are saying find x if g of x is equals to four where is g of x Sakina, there is g of x so they are simply saying equate that g of x to 4, then solve for x. Why x? Because that is what the question wants you to do. So it's very, very much important, ladies and gentlemen, that you, when you're given a question, you are able to notice the cream of the question. What is the cream of the question? The cream of the question is that word or those words when removed from the question, the whole of the question will remain senseless. So why do I have to talk about the cream of the question? Is because um, in the end, Sakina, if you do not say X is equals to whatever, you did not answer the question because the question says find X, which means in the end you must say X is equals to whatever the value you get so remember guys i had to just talk so that i give some of you guys an opportunity to be calculating that so a uh, sakina 
or are you happy there with the explanation that I've just given now? Uh, I suppose it makes sense to everyone. So let's see. That means where you see g of x, you substitute with 4. So that means I'm having 4, which is going to be equals to 2 to the exponent negative 3 minus 4. Let me try to solve for x. So there I'm going to transpose. That means I've got um, 4 plus 4 is 8. It's equals to 2 to the exponent negative x. Then, um, sorry guys, what is 8? Do you know what is 8 if I make the base to be 2? I think if I say 2 to the exponent 3 is 100 percent so that means 2 to the power 3 is equals to 8 so can you guys see the importance of that initial lesson that we had with regards to the exponential laws and everything this is where it is now applicable so that is the reason why i say you guys must be aware of the basic um math rules because once you are aware of the basic math rules that's when you'll be able to solve any mathematical problem you will never struggle with um this chapter called mathematics guys um for those of you guys who knows what mathematics is um you will understand that mathematics um it's normally known as a tomato which is um something easy to cook so we can easily cook the answers here guys um let's see because the bases are the same or they are equal they fall away then you can just equate the exponents remember guys what are we answering in the end we must say x is equals to sum so that means x here we have that negative invisible one you can divide by that negative invisible one so that it cancels you remain with x which is that x is equals to what is that is it not negative three ladies and gentlemen did you all get that as your answer or did you get a similar calculation over there same sir um the other guys, did you also get the same answer there? It's the same, sir. Okay, 100%, I suppose everyone got the same answer. So now, um, uh, what is the next question, guys? Can someone quickly check for us what is the next um, question? It's to write down the asymptote pattern. Write down the equation of the asymptote of um, F. And this question is allocated two marks is there someone who wants to give us um a, a response to that question it doesn't matter whether it's wrong or correct just give a response based on your understanding anyone to just take us through a a, a response to that question The, um, the asymptote of f of x mm -hmm. is x plus 2 equals to 0. Then x is equal to negative 2. <laughs> then for the y, for the vertical, yes. x equals to 0 there. Then x then, equals to negative 2. But, but how can x how can x be equals to negative 2? How? So, we equated that denominator to mm -hmm. 0. Mm -hmm. So then we take 
two to, to the other side, then it's still received. Okay. And then the other one, what did you say? It's one, sir. So, uh, so I'm saying y is equals to one, isn't it? Yes, sir. Okay. On a Cartesian plane, um, which one is which? If you represent it on a Cartesian plane, uh, guys, do, do before I even ask her any further questions, do do you guys agree with what she said over there, honourable members? Uh, Jennifer, I'm not getting a response from honorable members. I suppose um, they are also not sure, but let's continue. So, um, on a Cartesian plane, which one is the vertical asymptote and which one is the horizontal asymptote? The, the, the vertical asymptote uh, is the x value the, the horizontal asymptote the y value okay so that means where x is negative two that's where we have the vertical asymptote so you represent it as x is equals to negative um negative a uh, two then where we have x being one that's where we've got the horizontal asymptote being y is equals to um, one. Jennifer, um, in which quadrant are we possibly going to have our function? At quadrant number two and four. At quadrant number two, originally at quadrant number two and four. Why are you saying that? Or what makes you to say that? Or how do you notice it's going to be in those quadrants? It's because uh, the A value is negative. It's because the A value is negative. I hope everyone understands all of that. So, ladies and gentlemen, that's how you score yourself two marks. You're going to get a mark there. You're going to get a mark there. So, these broken lines, Shriyas, are what we call the asymptotes. So yesterday when I emphasized that point, Mr. D, to say um, uh, that's where we say our parabola, it's on Della, this asymptotes, it never touches, it never crosses and whatever. This is what we're talking about. So can you see how they ask it in exam as a question? They can just give you a function and say, um, what are the asymptotes for f of x? Then from there, you can easily uh, say this, you equate it to zero, then you solve for x, then that is your vertical asymptote, and then uh, that one, you take it as it is, then it means your horizontal asymptote is y is equals to one. So ladies and gentlemen, these things are not that much difficult, guys. I am telling you, if you can make sure to catch up on those previous lessons, everything that we are saying now has been discussed in those lessons. Very, very much important that uh, you guys catch up. So what I like is that uh, if we come across a new question, we can just take it as a, um, our homework to say we have done the lessons, but we haven't covered uh, this type of a, a question or we haven't covered that particular information, then we regard it as homework. We are going to research on it. And then once we get the answers on the next lesson, that's when we'll be able to actually um, have a discussion on that. So let's see. Um, what is the next question saying, guys? Is there someone? Uh, we can just quickly check what the question says. Write down the range of G. Uh, who's speaking? 
Jennifer. Oh, Jennifer. Okay. Uh, they say, write down the range of G. Good people, where is G? There is G. So that means every time when the question says, um, it doesn't matter whether the question says write down the range of G or write down the range of G or write down the range of G. Uh, good people, what matters the most in this case is that, uh, which question is that? I think it's question 5.4. So, um, in terms of the range, guys, in terms of the range, I just want to explain something to you guys. Um, uh, when we talk about the range, we are actually looking at the y-axis. Let's say uh, this is the x-axis just so that it's easy to explain. So, when we have something, let's say maybe something doing like that, and this is a, maybe let's say this is four, and this is maybe negative four. When we say, or when we talk about the range, we just want to know within which boundary, it's more like the boundary within which this graph is actually a, a ranging or is drawn. So can you see guys, this thing, it's actually ranging within these limits or within these boundaries. I just want to try, Mr. D, to explain what is meant um, by the range. If you have, for example, a, a function, let's say it could be a straight line, I mean, a, an exponential, something similar to that. We know very well that if this is the x-axis, uh, is the x-axis, this function it will never um, touch or cross that x axis, but it will just continue in that direction, sondelling uh, to that x axis, but it will never touch. And it will continue in that direction up to infinity, which means this function is actually ranging from there, that point where it will never touch, up to wherever. So that means, uh, because when we talk about the range, we talk about the y value, you must say y, it's either is greater than or otherwise is less than whatever number that you give. So in this case, if I had to comment on the range, I was going to say the range is between four and negative uh, four. You just need to know how to mathematically represent that as a form of your answer. So I'm not sure if you guys understood that part, but I'll just um, make an explanation here again to say, if we have something similar to that, and let's say maybe you have a function uh, like that, then maybe let's say this is one and this is two, and we have those arrows there. So when they ask what is the range for the graph of uh, J for Geneva. Uh, let's say we have G of X over there. So when they say, what is the range? So in terms of the range, you need to ask yourself from which Y value up to where is that function? So this function you can see, it is actually ranging from that point and it continues upwards uh, up to infinity because of those two arrows there. These arrows, they simply mean it just goes uh, up, it never stops, or it can go up to wherever, but the turning point is there. So that means the range of this function is possibly y uh, is greater or is equals to, uh, let's say, 1. So it's more like we say it starts from there going up um, to infinity. So uh, let's now try ladies and gentlemen, to answer this question. So the range, it's actually that negative four as it is. Uh, let me just try by estimation to draw maybe that function. Just um, as an example, guys, we know that originally, let's say one, two, three, and four over there. We know that 
originally a function of um let's say um what is it an exponential it's a, 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 a shape similar to that then from there that means for this one um the range is actually y is greater than zero y greater than is because this is the x-axis where y is zero there so this function it just sondela that x-axis and it never touches or crosses so that means the asymptote within that x-axis is actually a the range of that function it ranges within or maybe from that a asymptote in above a that asymptote never never touches never goes below so but in this case can you see guys this function a of an exponential function it is moved by four units downwards so that means the asymptote now changes and it is no longer zero so that means it is moved let's say one two three four so can you see a uh, let's see from there it's one two three four so that means that function now it is actually going to be a uh, there so the asymptote of this jennifer i'm sure you agree with me if i would say the asymptote is y is equals to negative Four. So that means this function, it will just get closer to negative four. It will never touch. It will never cross. So in short, it's more like this thing being the asymptote. At the same time, it tells us more about the range of a function. So the range, we say this function, it's actually ranging above that asymptote. That is why when we answer that question, we are going to say y is greater than negative four why greater than negative four is because um it ranges above that line of y is equals to negative four so the moment you see yourself saying greater than or is equals to that's if this function is going to touch that asymptote even though it does not cross the moment it cross we cannot talk about the range but the moment it touches then you say greater or equal to but the moment it does not touch then you don't include that is equals to so ladies and gentlemen i'm not sure if um someone needs to ask a question with regards to what i've explained or otherwise if it makes sense to everyone Uh, guys are you still there did you guys understood that explanation yes sir okay i suppose um it made sense to everyone so that is how you answer that question which was allocated i think uh, how many marks i think it was one mark it was let's see uh, yes it was allocated one mark so guys what is the next question anyone to just quickly check for us what is the next question there So you must determine the coordinates for the x and y intercept of uh, f. Okay, so guys, in this case, they want you to determine the coordinates of the x and the y intercept of 
F. Very, very much important lady. So the cream of the question here is that what the question wants you to calculate is the coordinates for the X and Y for the graph of F. So just make sure that every time when a question is asked, you are able to interpret what the question wants you to do. Most importantly, the coordinates is X and Y. <coughs> this is what we call the coordinates. Do not give a value as your final answer. Provide the coordinates in a form of X and Y. That is, that is how I'm going to say you've answered my question. And the X and the Y for the function of F. Don't look anymore at G of X, but concentrate on F of X. So here you start. You say for the X intercept, what do you guys know about the X intercept? What happens the moment you say a uh, where you calculate the X intercept? What happens to what? That's Y equals to zero. Minente, that's where y is equals to zero. What does it mean, Minente? Minente, 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 are you there? Yes, I'm there. So, what does it mean when you say x intercept? Uh, at x intercept, that's where y is equals to zero. What is the next step in other ways? Um, in a formula, you will substitute zero uh, as calendar y. As calendar y, si so substitute u zero, base si a negative, a, a, what is it, negative three plus two a, plus one. Usho njalo, minente. Yes, Ladies and gentlemen, does it make sense to everyone? I hope it does because this is what you've been doing uh, since primary, guys. I'm sure you've been saying at um, the x-intercept y is equals to zero. Minente, since I'm Johnny Manch, what is the next step? Um. Uh, so um, letter O positive one, so let's take zero. Mm -hmm. uh, positive one. Mm-hmm. Masege, negative three over X plus two. Mm-hmm. Bese. Uh, so divide what side by negative three? Then the three low masia cantalega. The negative two pesos masia cantalega. Okay. A bopa, bopa, bopa. Bope la prominente. A bope, bope, bope. Um, good people in this case. So remember, guys, Shrias, the moment you notice over on the other side of the equation. So can you see, guys, she has been coming with it nicely. It's only at this stage where it gets a bit tricky. So um, that is the reason why I hate it when someone who's in grade uh, 12, for example, they ask if the lesson is for grade 10, 11, or 12. The reason to that, Shrias, is because... Um, and one thing for sure, just keep it up, Mintle, uh, Minentle. I noticed you don't ask such questions. You attend every lesson that I conduct. So the reason to that, Shriyas, is because um, for those who are in grade 12 and they ask if the lesson is for grade 10 or for grade 11, is because they know that at the x-intercept, that's where y is equals to zero. But when we do grade 10 stuff solving for this type of problems, they think they are too easy or they are for grade 10s and not for them. But can you see how important it is that when you get to this stage, you need to quickly solve that. It gets a bit tricky 
um, in such situations, guys, you know exactly the starting point, but in terms of the calculation, you are not able to, um, you know, proceed. So let's see. A minute, okay. Um, I'm going to make you to get it correct. So unmute your mic. Let's 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 masculine a a minute masculine. I need to oya yaz a fraction. Yes, sir. And if fraction we want to get that, isn't it? Yes, sir. So, masse une if fraction on the other side of an equation. Umele uyenze if fraction on this side. Because une if fraction on the other side. Uyanyizwa. Yes, sir. If I forgot. Uyayibono kuti. Uyayibono kuti. Kubalu legile kanja unguti um, uh, ukumbule yonke into nga fractions. Yes, sir. Manje sinza nja. Ish. So, sizo cross multiply. Uya kumbule manje. Ukotli. No, sir. Okay. Must cross multiply. What are we having? So we have this multiplying that at the bottom, isn't it? Yes. So that means we are going to have negative 1 into x plus 2, then we close. It's equals to you cross multiply, isn't it? Yes. Then what are we having there? Uh, remember, guys, you can you can participate in this case. I'm glad um, Minentle has noticed that when it gets to this stage, if you have a fraction button, um, you also do a fraction button on the other side. Then from there, you cross multiply. So what we had Minentle there is that negative one multiplying the whole of that. So now you have this multiplying that. So it's more like you have one multiplied by negative three or you can just put it in brackets like that so what are we having now we have this times that that times that so yeah. you're just solving for x so we have negative x are you still there is it you mean uh, then you have that times that which is negative three uh, what are we having there guys oh minently you're still there minently what well, since i'm johnny lab so 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 solve for x mm-hmm I see so solve again. Okay, so let's have negative, negative two, uh, mm -hmm. negative three, then use about positive. Gala will solve negative x. Okay, so, okay, so something like that. Yes. Okay, so you said, what are we having there? I don't have a calculator. A, One. Anyone to assist? Negative one, sir. Negative, negative one. one, sir. So it's negative, negative one hundred percent. So we still have that. So what is x uh, minently? So divide by negative one. So, mm -hmm. so x is the positive. Then no y, my I think so. Which means x is equals to positive one. So minently. Asinga kwe iti ngova, unomzan, examina ute sifune ama coordinate. And i coordinate siya kwazi ukuti u x um, bese kune no y. Kusho kuti, si ketile um, nga the first um, coordinate. So now, let's perform a similar calculation but for a y-intercept. Let me see. Is there someone who wants to quickly take us through just like we did with Minentle but without you engaging with me? You just go for it up until the end. Anyone guys? y in town Except mm, 
x square to zero. Anyone, guys? So, um, mm -hmm. on f of x, previous x, you put zero. Uh, who's speaking? Jennifer. Oh, yes. Uh, Dumelo, okay. What, what do we do? Say, so, is negative three. Mm -hmm. Over zero plus two. Over zero plus two. Mm -hmm. Plus one. Plus one. Mm -hmm. Punch, then it's a cos negative half. Answer is cos negative half. A mathematically, Jennifer, how do we write that? Because uh, it's just that. Or maybe let me explain, Janiva, so that next time uh, you know. So, uh, you have to write it as y is equals to that, not just that. Ne. Yes. Sir. So that on your next step, you can therefore say it's equals to whatever that you get, we know that is actually equals to one but if you just write it like that we are no longer sure if it is x which is equals to that or if it is um a whatever that is equals to that so just always remember to mathematically represent it correctly so that means when you punch all of this what, what are you getting there what did you see? what did you guys say is the answer there It's negative one over two. It's negative one over two. So, then, um, mm -hmm. Bese. therefore, y is equal to zero is to negative one over two. So that means the coordinates there we have zero and negative a uh, half. So. Ladies and gentlemen, this is how you represent the coordinates. This is how you represent the coordinates. By so doing, how many marks uh, do you get for doing that, guys? Um, this thing is allocated how many marks? Let me see. It's actually allocated five marks. It's a lot of marks. So, good people, before we move to the next question, um. Are you guys happy up to what we have done up to this stage? Can you guys just uh, maybe unmute your mics and just um, say something, guys? Yes, sir. Ferdinand uh, Matsiriso. Kele. Uh, Inchangas. I see Dino's there. Tumelo. Uh, are you guys doing okay there? Uh, are we guys on the same page? Yes. Uh, yes, we are on the same page. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, Ferdinand, wa wa kamo North West. Oh, network or networking? Okay. No. Network it like Taba Okay, no, it's fine. Remember, guys, this lesson is being recorded. It's going to be posted online tomorrow. You can nicely, nicely, nicely catch up. Let me see. Uh, I see Kevin. Kevin wants to... Kevin, why are you guys unmuted? What's going on with you guys who are unmuted? Um, I don't know what's going on. Bali there, she's also un, uh, 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 muted. You are muted. I'm wondering why are you guys muted so guys just in case if you are muted you're not able to participate in this let's just make sure to send me um an inbox after this lesson i'll just bring it to uh, my admin's attention to find out what could be the issue over there so ladies and gentlemen i suppose you are happy we can now move to the next uh, question remember guys remember guys everything that i'm saying uh, it's based on our yesterday's lesson because we did exponential and hyperbola. So, uh, 
There's no magic, guys. We don't apply magic in mathematics, but we practice some more. So just make sure that every time when you study this chapter, before you start with the questions, exam questions, go through um, those two lessons just so that you refresh. Then from there, you can start answering the questions. I can promise you guys, if you, you, you watch a lesson that I did and you're catch up in, and there's something that is confusing you because uh, you couldn't attend the lesson, you couldn't ask. If you send me a voice note to say, um, I watched this lesson, you can even forward me the link and you ask a question that you have. You can just say forward it to maybe 13 minutes. You said this, uh, this is what is confusing. Because I've already done that lesson, I'm going to easily and happily explain to you. Unlike if you ask me something that I haven't prepared for, something I haven't done, whatever. Uh, I don't like just responding for the sake of responding, guys. Um, I like it when I help you to answer not only the question that you're asking for, but in case if something new comes, I want you to use the same um, information to answer different questions. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's now try to move to the next question. Um, just make sure that you write all of those answers, guys, so that in case if we happen to need those then um uh, we can easily get those answers so what is the next question saying guys um is there something is there someone who can easily or quickly uh, just read the next question Uh, guys, are you there? Yes. Determine the equation of axis of symmetry of F, which has a negative gradient. Leave your answer in the form Y is equal to MX plus C. 100%. So the question says, uh, determine the equation. Very, very much important, ladies and gentlemen. So that means the cream of the question is the equation. As your final answer, guys, do not give a value. Do not give, ladies and gentlemen, anything other than the equation. In what form? In this form of y is equals to mx plus c a question that you should be asking yourself what type of an equation or a function is that one anyone to respond to that question a straight line sir. a straight line so a which function are we looking at between those two of f of x 100% of f of x it is mentioned in the question and again most importantly they say um it is the equation of the axis of symmetry which is um what examiner is looking for and most importantly which has a negative gradient so remember guys if you do not know what an axis of symmetry is, then you are going to have a challenge in answering this question. Remember, uh, I said, let me see, we have Mr. Kelly there and his brother, um, um, uh, let's see, uh, Kevin O.D. So, uh, Kevin O.D., when we talk about the axis of symmetry, we talk about that line that cuts 
that slice of bread in equal halves so that you guys don't fight. So you can either cut it um, into half like that. Uh, my brother, do you agree with me uh, over there when I say I can cut it like that and it is good? Uh, <coughs> sorry, it is going to have two equal halves. Uh, brother Kelly, do you agree with me on that one? Uh, yes, sir. Do you also agree that I can still cut it like that? Forget about uh, this line and just maybe assume it's only that line that I'm having. Uh, let's see who's on the line. Uh, brother Kevin, do you agree with me on that? Uh, my brother. He's not there. Let me see who's there. Uh, Shriyas, do you agree? Uh, I'm trying to get a backup, guys. I'm, I'm running low on my power. But it's fine. Um, I suppose it's a yes to my answer. So, if this thing I can cut it like that and it has equal halves and I can cut it like that and it has equal halves. Do you guys also agree that I can also cut it uh, like that and it is still going to be that half being equals to a uh, that half. Do you guys agree with me on that one? Yes, sir. Yes. And again, do you agree that I can possibly cut it like that? And it is still going to have equal halves. Yes, sir. Something interesting there, Shriyas. Can you see? This is a straight line. This is a straight line. But you just need to know that it's a straight line that cuts this slice of bread into uh, two equal halves. So between this straight line and that straight line, which one has got a positive gradient and which one has got a negative gradient? Okay, let me just do this, guys. Let's say this is line one and line two. Um, between those two lines, which one has got um, a positive gradient and which one has got a negative gradient? I'm trying to just get my power bank and make sure that I don't run out of uh, battery, guys. But there is line a one positive gradient. Line one positive gradient. Line two, obviously, a negative, negative gradient, isn't it? Yes. Okay, hundred percent. So between line one and line two. Uh, that means already we are aware in terms of um, which line is going to possibly be the axis of symmetry uh, for the graph of F. Remember, guys, in this case, you just need to um, you just need to be aware in terms of in which quadrant is that going to be. So let's just make an assumption that we've got. Let me just find a different mark. Let's make an assumption that we have got uh, that, and again, we have that. So you guys said this is going to be um, in which quadrant? You said it's going to be in uh, which quadrant, guys? Which quadrant did you say? Two and four, sir. Okay, two and four. So... Remember, if it was just negative 3 over x, you know the, 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 what is it? the asymptotes were going to be within the x and the y axis. But in this case, because of this, uh, you guys said um, the asymptotes, what is it? You said it's negative 2 and you said it's 1. I'm sure you guys remember that. Um, 
uh, who was it? Was it, was it Jennifer or, or Minenta who said this were the coordinates of the assembly? So that means um, this function, it actually shifts by negative two to the left. So that means one, two, there we are going to have that asymptote over there. And again, um, a, and then it shifts by that upwards. So let's say we have one over there, then we have an asymptote over there. Do you guys agree that based on what you are saying, it means this function is going to be there? Remember, uh, we said erapala, lady asymptote. So this one also on this side, I'm not sure if you guys agree that we might be having something similar to that. Do you guys agree with this? And does it make sense to everyone? Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, hundred percent. So, when we talk about um, a, the 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 axis of symmetry, let me just go back to that question. It says the axis of symmetry of F, which has a negative gradient. So that line, guys, which cuts this function it passes through that point over there so is it going to be a line like that or is it going to be a line like that so what i'm saying is it's either it's a straight line passing like that or it's a straight line passing like that which line is it going to be? Okay, so this is what is going to be, guys. Between a line passing like that or a line passing like that, which one has got a negative gradient? someone is thinking about the answer <clears throat> they are suspecting but they are not sure um mr kelly i'm going to help you to answer this one if we have a straight line like that passing through the intersection of these um asymptotes and again if you have um a, a straight line like that between these two straight lines which one has got a positive gradient and which one has got a negative gradient let's say between one and two someone is speaking uh, you can go for it. Who's speaking? It's Dumelo, say. Dumelo, between line one and line two, which one has got a positive gradient and which one has got a negative gradient? Line one mm -hmm. has a, a positive gradient and line two has a negative gradient. Uh, don't mute your mic. Okay, so... That means the question in exam, Dumelo, they can say, um, give the equation of the axis of symmetry in that format, which has a positive gradient. If they say with a positive gradient, then you already know that you have y is equals to positive x plus c. But if they say with a negative gradient, you already have y is equals to a negative x plus c so that means this line it cuts this into half guys you can see this is that half this is that half and again on this side you have that half and you have that half and again with that line it also cuts it into half uh, you have that and you have that that's why i had a braid and said i can cut it like that you guys say it 
uh, I can it can still be cut into two equal halves with that line. And again, you also said with that line, it can still be cut into two equal halves. So this line has got a positive gradient. This line has got a negative gradient. It's just a matter of what the question said. So in this case, um, Dumelo, the question, are they talking about when the gradient is positive or negative? It's when the gradient, eh? yeah, it's when the gradient is negative. When the gradient is negative. So, th so that means already you have y is equals to negative um, 1x plus c. So, uh, Dumelo, you said this thing at a point that you know that this line is passing through. So what is the coordinates of that point? It's negative 2 and 1. Yeah, it's negative 2 and 100%. So um, what do you do, uh, Dumelo, is just to substitute this into the equation you solve for C. Then after you have a C, you just rewrite it in the correct form. That's how you score a uh, full marks for this question. You can see it's allocated two marks. It's not that much complicated. So do, do you want to take us through the final answer to me? To me, lo, to me, lo, to me, lo, to me, lo. Go for it, to me, lo, to me, lo, to me, lo, to me, lo. Ari, 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 Ari. One is equal to, you substitute the same. One. Why is equal one? Mm -hmm. Negative. Mm -hmm. Negative two. Negative two. Plus me. So just continue until the final answer as I enjoy you um, taking over okay. the lesson. Uh, C is equal to negative 1. Therefore, Y is equal to negative X, negative 1. Hey, 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 hey. Do me Do me what, what are you doing there, do me uh, As a slow learner, can you quickly explain how did you get the negative 1? You see now, uh, you are losing us now. Um, say... It's one is equal to that negative plus negative is positive. So it's one is equal to positive two plus C. Oh, so remember, Dumelo, you say it's negative times negative, not negative plus negative. Ne? Oh, yes. Uh, okay. Negative. So it's two plus C. Oh, you transpose. Ne? Then it's one minus two is negative one, which is equals to C. Okay. Then... A, what is the last step? Therefore, so you say y is equal to negative x minus 1. Do me lo, 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 do me lo. Ladies and gentlemen, this is how you answer this question. So, a Good people, I want you guys to be aware that you are very, very lucky because in this type of lessons, um, you just need to be aware of what the question wants. You can see now, Tumelo, uh, with confidence, she is taking us through uh, that question up until the final answer. But one thing for sure, Tumelo, did you fully understand what the question wanted you to do before we get to this uh, final stage? Yes, uh, I do understand. I mean, uh, before we started uh, answering this question, when it was just a question, did you understand the question? Do you think you were going to get to this final answer? Yes. Uh... Are you sure? Uh, I don't trust you, Dumelo. Did I not ask 
if someone can answer this question and Dumelo kept quiet. Guys, do you guys trust him? Do you believe him? Hey, I'm suspecting something is fishy there. Dumelo, are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. No, 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 no. Eh, I'm not convinced, a eh, Dumel. But it's fine. Um, eh, as long as you say you would have got to that final answer, I'm very much happy that you guys you've got an idea of what's going on over there. But for those of you, um who had no idea or who had no clue. Just make sure that you fully understand what the question wants. So that means sometimes a question may say uh, the axis of symmetry with a negative gradient or a positive gradient. You just need to be aware of what um, what that means. Then you can easily answer um, the question. So that is how you score yourself uh, two marks, guys. So. Can you see the next question 5.7 says sketch the graph of f and g on the same system of axes clearly show all intercepts with the axis and any asymptotes so can you guys see that actually we have drawn the first function there let me just remove all of that so that we draw it nicely there uh, but do you guys understand what the question wants you to do? Yes, sir. Okay. So, three years, what they want you guys to do is to plot these two functions. So, I think uh, we drew the first one. So, we said there we've got negative uh, 2 as that. And then we had 1 as an asymptote over there. And what we did was to have something like that on this side. And again, I think we also had something like that on the other side. And we said this is um, the graph of f. Um, and again, obviously, is the same uh, graph of F. So we must show um, this intercepts, guys. We must show this intercepts. I'm pretty much sure that you guys, you understand very well that you should be saying, for example, at where, um, what is it? At where, for example, X is equals to maybe negative 1, you substitute it there you check what answer you are getting at where x is equals to maybe zero what are you getting where x is equals to one what are you getting where whatever is equals to what then you just proceed with that calculation so because i've done this question i think when you substitute zero there what are you guys getting uh, let me just bring that calculator to confirm what are we getting there um negative three a zero plus two plus one i'm getting negative half so that means where x a uh, it's zero then y is negative half then what about where x is one there uh, let me see where x is one you are going to have three that a zero so if you substitute one there you have one plus two is three negative 3 divided by 3 is negative 1 plus 1, then that is um, 0. So can you see that means there it's actually 1. So the way you do it, guys, you can just have a table similar to that. You have a table there where you have the x values, you have the y values. Then you can maybe say you start from negative 2, negative 1, 0, then 1, and two. Then from there, you substitute there with negative two there and check what are you getting. Obviously, you get um, an error, which means this is your asymptote. Then you continue. Where 
a x is negative one then you test what answer are you getting whatever that you get you can just make a dot there then where x is zero that's where i got that a negative one over two where x is one i'm getting a zero then maybe where x is two let me check what am i getting there i delete two where x is two i'm getting quarter so quarter is some somewhere just above um somewhere just above that so this thing it is just going to continue like that like that getting closer to that but it will never touch it will just a uh, sondella to that asymptote then you also do the same when you you plot this one but most importantly remember guys what is the asymptote for the graph of g negative four it's negative four so where's negative there's negative five there negative one negative two negative three uh, okay negative four let's just assume negative four to be there then as i've indicated guys it's always best to firstly start with the asymptote before you start drawing the function so now let's maybe try uh, to have a table especially for that one so that means you are going to have let's say a table like that where maybe we we'll have x you have y this is x this is y we can maybe start a at certain values let's maybe start at let's see maybe negative two negative a one zero one two maybe three a big yeah three so what happens when we substitute there with three what 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 answer are we getting there or maybe let's start with negative three because there we have positive three so let's start at negative three and see what y value are we getting there can someone just punch there and let us know what answer are you getting there Uh, do you have a calculator there do you guys have calculators there uh, dinos uh, are we substituting negative three yeah, yes. okay i got negative 31 over eight what let me see if uh, we okay let me is if i do i times the signs i'll get four so can you see um a uh, moment it's very very much important that when you substitute let's say uh, do it like this way you say y as equals to you must say two negative into uh, sorry then you say minus four then you substitute whatever there but don't forget that negative there so when you substitute negative three there what are you getting when you substitute negative two what are you getting when you substitute negative one what are you getting zero what are you getting positive one what are you getting positive two what are you getting positive three what are you getting that's what you should do in order to make the points then from there you connect the points so what are you getting with the first one mm, which one two so, minus two no negative four negative three i mean i got positive four okay so let's write positive four there so when you edit and put negative two what are you getting okay Zero. zero you are getting zero when you punch that what are you getting 
So all of minus you guys two. can participate so that we get the right answer. Um, she say minus two. I hope it's correct. What happens when we put in that? Okay. Minus three. She's getting minus three when we put in that. Guys, just make sure that is correct. Uh, minus seven over two. Minus seven over two. Maybe a as a decimal. What is it as a decimal? Minus three comma five. Min oh, it's more like three and a half. Okay. Then what about when you punch two? Minus fifteen over four. Minus fifteen over four. As a decimal, what is it? Minus three comma seven five. Minus three comma seven five. What about three? Minus thirty one over eight. Minus thirty one over eight. What is it as a decimal? Minus three comma eight seven five. Eight seven five. Okay. Guys, do you agree with a a Mabuntle there? Is is she correct? Yes, sir. Okay, so let's make the points now. You said where x is negative 3, y is 4. So let's say this is 1, 2, 3, 4. Where x is negative 3 is 4. So this is negative 1, negative 2, negative 1, negative 2, maybe negative 3. Uh, it's somewhere there. So let's make a dot there and say maybe it's somewhere there. Where x is negative 2, you said it's what is 0. Ne? Did you say it's 0? I think you said it's 0. So that means the other point is there. Where x is negative 1, um, y is negative 2. So there is negative 1, there is negative. Okay, another point is there. Where x is... Uh, wait, 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 wait. It's not that point there guys i'm not sure if you're able to notice that we say where x is negative one y is negative two so um it's actually let's see negative one negative two so it's somewhere there and where x is zero then y is negative three negative three it's a point there and then where um x is 1, this is 3.5. 3.5 is somewhere there. Where x is 1, 3.5 is there. Because this is, remember, it's negative 4. Then can you see, we have negative... Um, wait, what is this one? Is it negative 3,75 when you substitute with 2 there? Can someone confirm for me that one? Yes, sir. Okay, so that means when x is 2, then you have it somewhere there. When x is 3, I think we had it also somewhere there. Can you see, guys, it forms that shape. So all you do is just to connect the dots. It's as easy as that. You just connect the dots. You just connect the dots can you see what it does guys um it just gets closer but it will never touch or cross so can you see this is the shape for the graph of g so it is that type of a shape and remember um we used to say this function of a, an exponential it can either be that type or this type and we said this type is an increasing one and this one is a decreasing one i'm not sure if you guys remember but ladies and gentlemen uh, did you all follow what i was doing over there did it make sense to everyone yes 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 sir okay 100 percent. so 
quickly a uh, let's move to the next question but this is how you score yourself full six marks imagine what you can do with six marks out of 150 it's a lot of marks guys so just make sure that you maximize you answer the question and based on the knowledge that you learned in class you apply all of that so what is the next question guys the next question says if it is given that f of negative one is equals to um a g of negative one determine the value of x for which g of x is greater than a f of x are you guys able to uh, try that question over there Uh, we are just mm -hmm. substituting me. Mm -hmm. So I got for f of x, I got minus 2. Then for g of x, I got minus 2 again. Um, she substituted and she got some values. But in this case, I'm not sure who asked. Um, that question but in this case a uh, madam speaker it's a little bit tricky because remember you can still substitute but what is the cream of the question there can you see they want you to determine the values of x for which g of x is greater than f of x so it's more like they want to know um where let's firstly try to identify that point guys uh, let's see where is that point where is that point where a uh, x is negative one is this is where x is negative and it seems like it is actually that point there where you have x being negative one so what the question is asking there is that um for which values of x is this graph of g of x greater than this graph of f this type of questions are a bit tricky guys and i'm sure uh, we did not go deep into this type in our lesson because um you just need to understand the question to be able to answer the question in this case it's not like it's something that um we can teach you because we don't know how the question will be asked but still um guys is there someone who wants to give it a try again Uh, guys are you are you there i think i'm going to give you guys this one as a homework and that is going to indicate to me in terms of who attended the lesson but just make sure you are able to understand that this is g of x and this is f of x when you say f of x we are talking about that function and again this function so we want to know a uh, that point where x is negative one for which values of x are we having g of x being greater or equal to f of x so this is how you need to um interpret this question and again focus on this part and again that point and comment in terms of which values of x do you have g of x being greater or equals to um f of x so um 
it might be a bit tricky but you just need to be aware that you might be focusing at two points probably probably that point and that point over there but i don't want to give you guys a clue i just want you guys to try it on your own so if you get an answer of which you think is correct you can just send an inbox then i'll have a look at that answer so guys this should bring us to the end of our lesson for today and i hope you enjoy it as much as i did so guys before i close is there someone who's got a question or did you all understood a uh, most of the things which was discussed in this lesson are you guys happy there let me see yes sir, we are okay i suppose there's no question um from anyone's side so guys thanks very much for joining my name is desmond and i'm out thank you sir Thank you, sir. Hey, Njabulu, do you want to speak? I notice you guys are mute. What's going on? Likanye, Likanye Guzi, Likanye Guzi. Are you okay there? No sipo angel. No sipo. How is it going there? Tebazo, tebazo. Are you good that side? Li, likeleli, likeleli. How is it going there? Kululekani flop. Kulekani flop. Are you are you okay there? Kozofazo, kozi. Are you okay there? Were you guys understanding what we're doing today? Yes, sir, I did. Uh, Even though I was muted, so I wasn't able to ask some other question where I wasn't understand. But there was other student who asked the same question I was going to ask. Then I get understand yeah, okay. what I mean. Okay, hundred percent. So just make sure that after the end of this lesson, for those of you guys who were muted. Uh, just make sure to send an inbox. Then I'll I'll check what could be the issue there. Because I know my admin, they also have their role to play. So you might find that they've done some stuff based on whatever there. But I'll just have a look at it. So guys, thanks very much. Have a good night. Uh, uh, sir. Uh, Mr. Taylor, Gibu. Uh, can you please repeat the last question that you asked? Um, let me see. But I, I think, no, it's fine, Mister Kelly. You'll find that question. I think it's sent in the group. I'm just not sure if you guys can. See. Can you try to click maybe on your screen? Click back, then go into the group. I think. Um, okay, sir. Yes, so you'll find it there. Okay, cheers, guys. Sir, I'm sorry. So are we going to submit it in your inbox or DF? Yes, always, always um, homeworks, questions, anything via inbox. So we try to keep the, the group clean so that during exams, when you want to find some information, you won't struggle with um, people commenting, saying, hi, when are we doing uh, whatever, whatever, I'm new. Uh, what, 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 what? We don't want those comments in the group. We just want to keep it clean so that during exam time you won't struggle to find uh, important links, information, or whatever. So make sure that everything that you communicate is via inbox. You only raise your hand in the group if you'll be able to attend the lessons. Um, does it make sense? Yes. Sir. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Guys, have a good night. Good night.